Hey there, Kevin from CD Baby here with an Office Hours Live, where we're going to be talking about getting out of a creative rut. Plus, we'll be taking your questions. So let me get Christina in on the feed. She's joining me today. Hey, Christina, how are Hi. you? Hi, good. How are you? Doing well. Uh, while people are joining, be sure to say hi in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. And uh, we'll be taking some questions and such later on. But uh, we're going to talk a little bit about getting out of that creative rut. But first, some important things for you to know. One, if you're watching this video, whether on YouTube or Facebook, be sure that you are actually following us on those platforms, especially YouTube. We've been posting a lot of videos on YouTube lately. And so go there and subscribe. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification icon. It's usually down at the bottom. So whenever we post new videos, you'll get it. We're posting a lot of great content and it's just going to keep rolling. So you don't want to miss it. And also, even more important, early bird tickets are now available for the DIY Musician Conference happening in Austin, Texas, coming up in August of this year. August 26th through 28th. Tickets are only $99 right now. Go to DIYMusicianCon.com. You're going to want to be there. So much has changed in the last couple of years since people have been doing music conferences, and this one's going to be really special. So you're going to want to be there. And in, most importantly, your ticket, you can attend in person or watch online. Same ticket, whatever option you prefer. So even if you can't make it to Austin, you can get a ticket and attend and watch online and there'll be special stuff for people online as well. So there, there you have it. And it looks like we've got people rolling in. Um, oh, sorry, Aaron. We interrupted Aaron's recording. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Aaron, sorry. you're here every week and we're so grateful to see your name every single week. Um, he is here every week. You're having a great day. So, uh, a question for everybody in the comments. Uh, how do you get out of a creative rut? We've got some ideas here, but if you've got an idea of what you do or something you want to share, feel free to weigh in on the comments so the artists can see and we might put it on the screen. Um, so this is from the most recent DIY Musician podcast, which is available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcast. You should be listening to that as well. Uh, but we're going to hit on a couple of the, the high notes from that. Uh, Christina, yeah. you you actually have one of them here where uh, that uh, one of your song challenges. Why don't you talk about one of yeah. your song challenges? Well, I have a few and you can hear about them on the podcast. Um, they're basically I like to do this several times a year as sort of like a way to get my head out of my butt as far as songwriting goes. <laughs> and just like also just, you know, sometimes as artists, like we spend so much time trying to make the perfect thing that it really pushes on that procrastination button because you're just like, well, I can't sit down because I'm just like not in the headspace to make the perfect thing. Or, well, I can't come back to this idea because I, I haven't quite figured it out yet. Um, so some of these challenges are really good for just, you know, pushing through that that personal look. I mean, I have it. I don't know if everyone has it, but I have procrastination pretty hard when it comes to creative ambition. So pushing hard against that and just saying, you know what, let's just try something different to get out of this rut that I'm in. So I have a few. One of them that I really, really love doing, um, it's the first one I ever did and the one I've probably done the most, and it's called the 20 Song Game. Um, I talk about this pretty at length in the podcast, but the short overview of it is you've got 12 hours to write 20 songs. And I know that that sounds crazy, but it's totally, nice. totally a fun game. Um, to be completely honest, I've probably only ever made it to 12 to 14 songs in that 12 hour period, but that's okay because it's not really so much about getting to 20. It's more about just pushing through and the biggest, uh, sort of obstacle you're overcoming here is yourself and you're judging yourself. So saying no to judging, just like hearing the source of inspiration come out, riding that train writing it, recording it real fast and then moving on, which is like really hard for a lot of us to do because a lot of us want to sit there and tool at it and make it perfect. And sometimes that really like gets in the way. So really it's just a matter of coming up with 20 great ideas and then going in later and developing. So that's one of my favorite ones. Uh, have you ever done, an, have you done that one yet? 
I haven't done that one. One of the other uh, ones on your list here I've done, we've got some, actually, let me fix the screen here. Uh, so I was going to put, uh, somebody had a comment that was similar to one of the items on our list. Um, just fixing our background so it's not a picture of us. And uh, it is Craig. He says, when in a rut, I learned cover songs as a palate cleanser. Learning someone else's song refreshes my brain and helps me not be stuck in my own writing. That's one of the things from the list that is in that podcast episode. Learning someone else's song. Just getting out there and just taking some time to expand your music vocabulary. I think that's important. Um, I, for whatever reason, artists tend to be very precious about not yeah. wanting to do cover songs as if it's some sort of problem that you played someone else's song, but you can end up in this rut where you just, your, your musical vocabulary is this big where yeah. when you learn other people's music, you expand that vocabulary, you make your fingers do things that they don't normally do. Your brain thinks about it differently and it's an important exercise. And I think that can be a really great way to get a bunch of inspiration and going. You're never going to land exactly where that artist landed with this. You, generally, when you do something like this, it's sort of like you, you're you going around sort of their process. And then by the nature of who you are, anything you make in the world will always be unique to you. You can try to be like someone else as much as you want. But at the end of the day, there's something different about it because it's coming from your perspective. So I think it's a fun challenge if you definitely want to like get outside of your comfort zone and push against your personal like grain and then see where you land. Even if you don't end up using that stuff, you end up like having a whole new set of skills or a whole new chord progression that you hadn't thought of or a whole new like technique that maybe you hadn't thought of. So that's a really good one. I think for yeah. sure. David Deal has a different approach. I cleaned out my entire studio of boxes and gear, and my head is now clear. Oh, there. <laughs> sometimes, you, totally sometimes you just need to get rid of the visual distractions. <laughs> I cannot sit down to write unless I have cleared my space. And I know that that is like uh, the whole point of meditation is so that you can meditate no matter where you are. But I cannot like get into on a creative space unless like. I've cleaned my whole house, I've <laughs> set the scene. So another one that I have uh, that I think is fun to do with a big group of people or a medium sized group of people just to sort of like keep you all accountable is something called the 60 song game, which is one song every single day for two months. Uh, it is hard. When I've played this game and when I've hosted this game, the rule is you can't miss more than three. If you miss three, you're out. So that really keeps people <laughs> sort of like, <sighs> and and basically what it is, you know, you write a song every day, you upload it to like a shared system. For me, I've used SoundCloud with a group of people. Um, and then everybody's sort of keeping each other accountable. So if somebody misses a day, and then they've missed three days, they're out. And so there is a little bit of FOMO that you've missed out or that you like weren't able to finish it, which sort of has always kept me going with it. But by the end, you end up with 60 songs, which is crazy. And not all of them are winners. In fact, most of them aren't, but you'll have like five to 10 that you'll be like, man, I really did something cool with that one. And now you have you know stuff to work out, so. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a, a question, an unrelated question. David was asking, he's having problems accessing his account on the site. Any info? Uh, the site is working, so that's not something we're going to be able to help you here live on on uh, YouTube and Facebook. Uh, you're just going to have to reach out to support because our, our the website is up and running. Um, so there must be something more specific to what's going on with your computer or maybe your account that you'll need to contact us about. Um, Craig asked oh, if I was sorry. feeling better, and uh, yes, I am feeling better. I was out with COVID, which wasn't fun, but I'm feeling better much, much better. You have a glow, a, a glow that's just because mm -hmm. I got my hair cut. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Carrie says, I love streaming Sofa or Soma FM and jamming to it, Groove Salad. That's another great idea. If you are feeling like you're just not having fun writing collaborate, jam, like find other artists around the world that want to like send tracks back and forth. There's so many 
there's so much inspiration that you can get when you step outside of yourself. And I know that that's hard a lot of times for artists that are really precious about their songwriting, where they're like, nope, it's just my music, my inspiration, me, me, me. It's not going to help you. Sometimes the best thing you can do is just step outside of that comfort zone, bring someone else in, or, you know, just jam, like go find a few people that you want to jam to. I don't know about you, but I get really stressed out sometimes with jamming because I'm like, I, I don't want to do lead it. I don't want to lead. You lead. I will just play. I, I, I get stressed because people will want you to, I'm a guitar player. They'll want you to solo for like 10 minutes. I'm like, after 30 seconds, I'm bored as the guitar player. I don't yeah. want to hear a solo anymore. I mean, I'll lead if it's like a song that I wrote, but if we're <laughs> yeah. just here to jam, like someone need, needs to let us know like where we're going because I can't just jam on the same chord progression for five years, but still so worthwhile to just work with other people sometimes when you yeah. get out of your head. Another tip Craig has is uh, to go through his notepad from years ago and find old songs or ideas that are unfinished and give them new perspective. Same. This is one thing you absolutely should be doing if you are writing and recording. Do not throw away old ideas. It doesn't matter how old they are. They are still worth keeping and going back to every once in a while. Now, occasionally there might be an idea like you're like, that's garbage. I can get rid of that one. Just so you don't have too much junk building up. But uh, one thing that was interesting in the, the Beatles uh, documentary that, you know, just was on Disney Plus in December. It's still there. You can still watch it. The One of the things I found incredibly interesting is that uh, you see Paul and John going back to songs that they were working on mm -hmm. before they were even the Beatles. They went yeah. deep in the well of songs because they set this ambitious goal for themselves to write all these songs while on camera in three weeks and perform them live. And so they had to dig deep and, and go to the well of old songs, and they did. So yeah. uh, that's another way to get out of that creative rut. Um, go back through all those files. Keep them. Don't throw them away. I have like maybe 300 voice memos on my phone of just stuff that I'll <laughs> sing in the car or I'm walking down the street and I've got an idea and I'm like, this is brilliant. I need to put it down. And so I just like hum it into the phone. And I can't tell you how many times I have to go into those voice memos when I'm just like, I need to write something today. What am I going to write? And I go in there and I'm like, oh, this is why I put this down. So, you know, back in the day, it was like a tape recorder or whatever. Now it's our iPhones, but we have this amazing tool at our disposal to also just like keep track of ideas if we don't have a notebook or, you know, anything. So, yeah. Uh, Mike has a question about his uh, linking ASCAP to pro publishing release. He still gets a, a weekly email about it. What you need to do is you need to log in to the pro publishing hub in your account and make sure that all the information is correct for all your releases. Chances are, you have the information in there, but on one mm -hmm. of your releases, you didn't select uh, the right info or um, attach your, yourself as a writer to that track. Um, that's usually oh. the case. Also, if you had multiple writers on a track and you haven't filled out their information, but you did sign up for them to be collecting songwriters, you're going to keep getting that email. So make sure that you get all of the other songwriters on those track to send you information so that you can submit that. Yeah. Oh, uh, hey, we've got some Vivian saying thanks so much for your latest podcast about social media. You expressed exactly what I've been thinking, but didn't give myself uh, permission to admit. I've been hearing a lot of that. I think a lot of people are feeling burnt out on social media and feeling like it's a rat race. Or is that the thing? Hamster wheel? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, either, either way. Yes. So, if you haven't checked out the DIY Musician podcast, I highly recommend uh, the last episode we uh, that just went live this week, we uh, Christina and Chris talked about 10 ways to get yourself out of a musical rut. But the one before that, uh, that Vivian is talking about, we asked the question, is social media dead? And a lot of it was just giving artists permission to recognize that, hey, I wanted to be an artist that writes, records, and releases music. I wasn't wanting to... Uh, be somebody that just wastes all my time on social media all day. You don't have to do that. Nobody said you do. And their uh, social media can be great. It can be a great tool that assists in getting your music out to the world. 
But if all you're doing is focusing on that and not writing, recording and getting better as an artist, then what's the point? And I want to address what David here said. Yes, social media is too much for my generation. David, I don't know what generation you're in, but I want you to know that it's not just your generation. <laughs> I think every single generation is feeling it. I know that, uh, Kevin, even you said like your kids were like, we don't want to be on our phones all the time, you know? So it's sort of like, this is a multi-generational issue. It's just the time that we're in it became part of the fabric of our being. And now we're trying to figure out and like sort of assess how do we use this in a way that also makes our brains not fry. So yeah, totally. Yeah. And, and part of it is that we talk in that podcast, there's a lot of changes that have happened on platforms. We've seen platforms come and go and all the work you put into it disappear, but we've also seen drastic changes to how the platforms work and the algorithms. So the time and effort that, uh, you used to put into that seemed to do a lot, uh, seems to have a, a drastically minim minimized impact as of late. As the, the algorithms get more restrictive, they want you to pay to reach audiences. And so it takes more and more and more of your time to reach the same amount of people you used to do in minutes. Yeah. Now it takes half your day to keep Every that day. going. It's like this, like, like you said, getting on the hamster wheel and it's hard to get off. Um, uh, oh, and, and David said that's making him feel so much better. Yeah. It's not about age. It's about the time we're in. And I think everybody's feeling it down to children are, are like, this is too much. So, um, Norm here, management of your time is the key that works in both conversations, Norm, both yes. management of your time, spending it on social media, but also management of your time with creative challenges. Uh, one thing that I think is really important whenever I go to sit down to make music nowadays is to put my phone in the other room. Like if yes. it's there, I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to read it. I'm going to end up spending like, like getting hypnotized in Instagram for 20 minutes and then being like, wait, I wasn't supposed to, I was just checking to see what time it was. You know, So yeah, putting my phone away and saying for the next half an hour of time i'm just dedicating my brain to this one task and it doesn't need to be lucrative it doesn't need to be like prolific i'm just gonna make some music for 30 minutes <laughs> yeah yeah i think getting rid of the phone at least not in your visual line of sight because you're gonna see it and then we've been trained to think oh but i might miss something it's like no Focus on writing your song. Focus on making music. Uh, yeah. The one thing that you know we talked about in that podcast is that uh, the, the, the one precious commodity you have in life is time. Mm -hmm. And you can choose to spend it doing things that you think have value, or you can spend it doom scrolling for hours on end and realize you wasted yet another day. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that. the, that's the choice that most people are making. So don't do that. Be somebody that's like, I want my life to be about making music, not uh, just scrolling through endless feeds of content that you really don't care about. Um, Ing says, I think that's how you pronounce his name, Ing. Uh, I have lots of ideas on SoundCloud that are private, and every now and then I listen to them and find pieces that I can use in other songs. It's like an idea bank. That's how, that's how I work. I have basically... I'll come up with musical hooks, like a verse, a chorus idea, or maybe, um, you know, the, the musical hook for a song. And I'll just keep putting those in a folder. And then when my bandmates and I start working on songs, I share those with them. And it's like, we can mix and match. Sometimes we just need a bridge. I go to that well, find something that might work and share it with everybody. And, you know, it's a good way to, to that way you're not all hung up on, I must complete this 100%. It's like, no, get Get a basic idea down, uh, you know, might have a good melody. You might have a lyrical line. Just get it down and then organize it in a way that you know where it is when you want to go back to that well. Absolutely. Um, one of my other favorite projects or challenges is actually in February. It's called February Album Writing Month. Um, and the idea is that you write a song every two days. So it doesn't mean that you, you know, skip a day of sitting down, but it just might mean that you get two days to come up with the idea and record the song. 
And then by the end of the month, you should theoretically have about 14 songs. I did, they don't have to be perfect again. They don't have to be the, the album ready material, but they're at least the idea starts. So these are just like a few games that I like to play every year to get my head sort of un, unclustered and, <laughs> and get back into like a mode of writing. Cause I think the biggest thing is like, we have busy lives. We have day jobs. We have things to do every day that can really, really tear, like really tear down the artist part of us sometimes. Like unless you're Lady Gaga who gets to wake up and have a massage and drink her smoothie and then write, you know, like most of us don't get to do that every single day and, and enjoy like free time and free energy and free space. So finding little moments, little pockets of time that you can dedicate to your craft, not only will make you feel better as an artist, but I also guarantee it'll probably make you feel better as a human being because <laughs> it's good to spend some time with yourself. <laughs> um, here's a good question uh, from Vishwa. What do you think we should invest more in music video or music promotions? I think this is a good one, a good question, because uh, I think a lot, oftentimes people will blow a massive budget creating this ultimate official music video, which there's nothing wrong with that. But one music video is not going to make your career. So to me, I always want to maximize the amount of video and have money to be able to promote um, the music, oftentimes with video components because uh when you're running ads they're so much more uh, impactful if you have a visual component with them video uh on facebook on just ad like our ad platform at show.co they all have video options and they all are perform way better than just a static ad so uh one thing it's important to to know and i love we have a partner company called rotor video um I've made a bunch of videos with them. You don't have to make a video for the entire song. You don't have to start at the beginning either. Start at the chorus, the musical hook, and do like the first chorus and the second verse and the second chorus, and that's it. Short, it makes a shorter video so people will be more likely to watch the whole thing, but they're starting with the musical hook. If you're trying to advertise your music to people that haven't heard it before, don't start with some long, boring intro that nobody cares about. Right. That takes forever for them to get into it. They're going to go on by. So that's um, very true. That's very true. Been there. Um, I also think, though, if you are going to do a music video, it's important, like Kevin said, to use some of that footage for other things that are part of your marketing. So yeah. if you are going to make a music video, because you're like, that's that's part of your art process. That's that's which fine, is great. But, yes. Yeah, but cut it down into clips cut it down into canvas uh, clips, cut it down into social media clips, all of these things to help promote not only the single itself, but now the release. Sometimes music videos are a great way to remind people that a song is even out. Maybe you put your music, your single out on uh, February 1st, and then you're putting out a music video on February 14th. Two weeks have gone by. How much promotion have you done in the middle? Now you have an opportunity to remind people that the song is out and then make sure that you link to it in the music video description. But Again, it costs a lot of money. It, is it really worth it? That's really hard to tell. If you have a huge YouTube following or if you have a huge social media following and this is sort of more like an accoutrement to your release than it is like a big game changer, but it's also fun. It's fun yeah. to make music videos. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I am not down on music videos one bit. I but there there was this idea especially those of us who still remember the music video era of MTV, MTV VH1 <laughs> and, and some of the other things that followed even like early, uh, early years of YouTube, people just blew their entire budget creating sure. this massive one landmark video. And that can be fun and great, but just saying that that's not required. You right. can think more strategically and you can do a lot of great videos on a, a very, small budget with the tools we have now our all our phones uh especially iPhones have amazing cameras on them that there's there's no reason why you can't get creative and just um and and still have plenty of money to uh uh to to spend 
I like this message from Ng saying that you're wrong. Yeah, yeah, I, I, Roses, well, he said Guns and Roses, and he had my yeah. attention. No, you're right. You're writing. That was a game changer, but it was, you know, on MTV. And I think that's what we're trying to say is that, like, uh, it's not the era of MTV anymore. Unfortunately, even MTV doesn't play music videos. I think all they do is reality TV shows these days. Yeah. yeah. If they, yeah do they even that, exist? I don't know. That, <laughs> but, era, I, that era does not exist anymore. That is not the world we live in anymore. But As uh, much as I wish it was. If you were that music video... Guns N' Roses posting that on social media today as nobody. That video would not have done anything for them compared to what happened back then. Totally different world. But uh, points okay. for the Guns N' Roses reference. Um, Here's one that I really fans. want to address. Yes. David, I feel like I'm not reaching any big numbers of followers and feel groups like Art of Noise have just got me beat. I get challenged on this. Um, and then the GoPro comment is not related to what I want to talk about. Um, it is so easy to compare yourself, to compare your growth and be like, well, I'm just not going anywhere. Therefore, I'm going to just stop. That's not necessarily going to help you holistically as an artist. <laughs> I feel that the best thing to do when you're in that headspace is to, instead of focus on those things, reduce those things from your focus. If you're so concerned about, well, so-and-so has 50,000 Spotify monthly listeners and they you know, play the same venues I do, and why don't I have that many? Then instead, maybe focus on just your, on, on your art or your approach or something like that, but don't, don't stop comparing. That's all I'm trying to say. Stop comparing yourself. <laughs> That's not going to help. Yeah, there's you know? always going to be somebody that's outperforming you. It doesn't matter who you are. Uh, there's going to be somebody, and if you're always going to be people, and if you're the top of the top, you're going to lose that spot to somebody else at some point. Um, I guarantee so Guns and Roses are out there right now saying, <laughs> <laughs> you know, freaking ACDC sold more singles in 1980, whatever. <laughs> So it's always keep hustling, keep making your art. F yeah. the other people. They're not important. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think I'm really bad at music marketing because I'm just like, it's all about your heart. <laughs> but... Hey, that's what that's what the true artist is about anyway. Yeah. Um, I don't know their first name, but in Keen says, I have a doorknob hanger currently working. Do not disturb. That's that's another thing I think. That's important that, uh, you know, trying to get out of a musical rut, nothing's more frustrating than to be like, ah, I've got an hour tonight. I'm just going to write and record and then to constantly get interrupted. But setting some ground rules, even some ground rules with your band, like if you're writing with a mm -hmm. band, nothing will get me more angry than when we're trying to write and look and everyone's got their phone out. I'm like, hey, if Same. you guys would rather be on your phones than us writing right now, then go be on your phone because we yeah. have limited time to write together. If that doesn't mean anything to you, then we're all just wasting our time. I'm totally one of those band leaders that if we're having band practice and they're like, everybody's off noodling or like, I get so frustrated by it sometimes where I'm like, guys, can we just focus? <laughs> yeah. Um, Somebody said, every song I've tried making a banger and an album later, I'm still trying. I think that that is universal feeling and super familiar. But instead of trying to make a banger, just keep writing and keep finding. I mean, it's going to happen. It's not like it's it's really hard to know what's a banger, too, until you just put it out. So yeah. just take big risks. Even if you're not sure if it's a banger, put it out. Yeah, sometimes the the songs that you think are the best on your album are different than what people so actually true. connect with. Uh, it's, it's weird. It's especially, that's one of the things I think in a streaming world that is really been highlighted because um, before the streaming world, especially in the CD world, people typically bought an album, but they were, you know, there was releasing a single to radio and it's like, you had to pick the perfect song, but yeah. in a streaming world, any song can connect. And ends up oftentimes in weird places. When you go look at the data, it's like, wow, this one song on this one platform ended up in this playlist. And it's Probably. not the song I ever would have picked, but it's our most popular song on that platform. So you never know. You I never know. An, when. I put out an album last May and 
there was a single on it that I thought for sure was my biggest banger. I was like so proud of it. <laughs> I worked so hard on that beat. I felt like, oh my gosh, this is going to put me into the next level of like what level. people think of me as an artist. And like that one really underperformed compared to another song on that record that I thought was cheesy. And I was sort of like, I don't know, this is a little bit of a like, it's too cheesy, too pop. And of course that one was the one that like took off. So you never know your audience is like, is always changing. The yeah. things that your audience loved about you three years ago may evolve now. Like we all have universal tastes now. It isn't like some people only listen to this music and some people only listen to this music anymore. Like we're all, all over the map. So our tastes have changed. Um, just give your audience some credit that they're going to love you no matter what you put out. Exactly. Uh, we have time for a couple more questions and then we're going to uh, move on with our day. But you know, we don't want to hold everybody up too long after we're talking about being off social media. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, just want to, uh, let's see, I put this on the screen. DIYMusicianCon.com. Get your tickets for the DIY Musician Conference. It's happening August 26th through 28th in Austin, Texas. It's going to be a hybrid event. So you can attend in person or that same ticket will allow you to stream it from anywhere in the world. So, um, yeah, you, you should be there. We're, it's going to be a lot of great info. We're making sure this one is special after two years of not having the conference. Um, right now, tickets are just $99, and it's a great deal. And if you're interested in being a part of the open mic or showcase, you want to get your ticket early because we offer those opportunities to people who buy in early. Uh, because we get all that planned long before the event. And, it's and that gets you three days of hanging out with other artists. It gets you three days of getting to speak one-on-one -on -one to industry leaders, people from all of your favorite platforms. It gets you three days of getting to be together or virtually together, talking about this subject, making music, how to make a career off of it, and getting the best advice from people that don't know they don't stumble over their words all the time. There's so many wonderful people that are going to be speaking at this conference that have way better advice than, than, than we do. Sorry, Kevin. So come to the conference, DIY musician, Austin, Texas, August 26th to the 28th. It's going to be a good time. Yep. Yep. We'll have people from all the platforms there. Um, like Amazon, Spotify, Pandora is, is come in as a big sponsor. We've got Banzoogle and Berkeley and, and all sorts of great folks that'll be there to help you move your career forward. And if you do watch online, there still will be some virtual networking opportunities um, and such. And we'll make sure you get as much content as you can uh, possibly digest in three days online. But it'll be better if you're there in person because you just can't replace that. We're doing some really cool stuff to make sure it's as interactive as possible uh, with things like video and all that kind of stuff. It's going to be fun. All right. Well, oh, uh, Norm has a question. How can he check out our music? Uh, my band is called Small Town Poets. You can find us on all the places. Um, our latest album is called Northwest by Southeast. And Christina, your artist's name is Siren and the Sea. And also available everywhere on the internet. Just yes. look it up. Yes. Google it. Yes. All right. Well, I hope everybody has a great rest of their week. Yeah. Again, check out if you're on if you're watching on YouTube, be sure you're subscribed to our channel. We've been adding a lot of videos on YouTube. No matter where you're watching this, go check out our YouTube channel, subscribe. Lots of cool stuff dropping there. Uh, the DIY Musician podcast has been happening weekly. It's on YouTube, it's on Spotify, it's on Apple Podcasts, all the places. Lots of great info for you. And uh, it's just fun to be a part of the artist community. So um, connect with us in those places and we'll catch you next week. See you See next ya. week. See ya. Bye.